of when you watch this video, either towards the end of the year or the beginning of the new year, a lot of us are in a mind space of figuring out changes we need to make, big or small, to get to where we want to be in the future. My aim with this video sharing the highest paid jobs in the UK is actually to give you a bit of an idea of what options you might have out there depending on your skills or what new skills you might want to gain to kind of work towards some of these roles possibly or you can just watch for entertainment. In today's video I'm going to share some of the highest paid jobs in the UK as mentioned earlier. I'll also share um, the kind of higher end potential earnings for these roles as well as a brief description of what these roles are. So let's get straight into it. <laughs> So before I dive into the specific jobs and roles, there are some things I want you to keep in mind. Number one, location really does matter. In the UK at least, um, usually if you are based in London, there's a very high likelihood you would be paid a bit higher um, than outside of London. This being because the cost of living in London in particular is way higher than anywhere else. So it's only does make sense. Two, the range um, or earning potential for each job tends to depend on how much experience you have. In most roles and most industries, the more experienced you are, the more you get paid, which only makes sense because you're bringing more to the table in terms of experience. Also, how much you're paid tends to vary based on what industry you're in. Giving you an example, something like sales, for instance, if you are a salesperson selling, I don't know, paper, how much people are paid in the paper industry would probably be very different from how much people who are into software sales, for example, are paid. So just keep that in mind. Um, I personally have always worked for American companies um, and I found that American companies have a tendency, at least in my industry and my role, to pay much higher than British companies. Um, and to be honest, that's why I've always stuck with American companies because even thinking about my role in particular, I would probably take a pay cut of probably half what I earn right now if I were to move to a British company. Also, always think about how many hours you work relative to the annual salary. So when it comes to, for example, a 50K salary, some people can earn a 50K salary and they work 40 hours a week and that's it. You also have people who earn a 50K salary working 80 hours a week. In real terms, the people who work 80 hours they might take home the same amount of money, but their time is literally worth less. So that's also something to note. So while we're on the topic of getting ready for the new year and getting into a mind space of where I want to be, a really big thing for me is actually confidence. And something that brings me a lot of confidence is making sure I look and dress and present myself in a way that makes me happy and feel confident because I feel like it comes from the inside and a big thing for that is actually for me jewelry kind of incorporating little elegant but elevated pieces of jewelry into my look every day it doesn't have to be anything crazy for example the earrings I'm wearing at the moment all the jewellery I'm wearing today is from Ana Luisa Jewellery, but the earrings I'm wearing is, they're simple hoops, but the fact they have this little pearl for me is just a little elevated touch. Um, this beautiful necklace as well is pretty simple, but I feel like it's a bit of a unique design. And then when it comes to my bracelet, it is a simple kind of bracelet, but it's got those little diamantes in the middle that just give it, I feel like, a little elevated look. Even if no one sees it, I know that it makes me happy and makes me feel more confident. And a bit more about Ana Luisa, as a brand, they are carbon neutral, both when it comes to both the packaging as well as the products, which makes me feel a bit better knowing that 
everything I'm wearing is sustainably sourced. Their jewelry is very high quality. I actually worked with them around this time last year and all the jewelry I have from then, I still have now because it's actually really good quality. Um, I haven't been the most careful with them, but they seem to have survived through everything and they're just still really beautiful. And I get compliments on them, especially the bluish earrings. I'll insert a picture here. Um, all the time. So thank you so much to Ana Luisa Jewelry for sponsoring today's video. So first off, we have chief executives and senior officials. On average, they earn annually, at least as at 2002, 104,000 pounds. Now, one thing I will say, and I'll try to keep as a theme throughout this video is in my personal experience, probably because I work in tech, which is a which tend to pay much more on the higher end of things. I don't think I've ever had a chief executive that earned 100K. They earn way more than that. Um, but again, all the companies I've worked for have also been publicly traded companies. So they've been mostly really big companies. And that does tend to impact how much you're paid. Smaller tech companies tend to pay a lot less because there's a lot less resources going on or available rather obviously it's depending on so many different factors um but it's no surprise to anybody that chief executives and senior officials earn a lot of money and over 100k so we're gonna move on transformation director the salary range of transformation directors is between 150 and 200 thousand pounds the transformation director is responsible for driving change working closely with people at all levels of the organization and holding them to account for hundreds or even thousands of daily tasks. That seems like a hard job, <laughs> but it looks like they're paid pretty well. Machine learning specialists. The salary range here is between 70 to 150,000 um, pounds. The machine learning specialist role is generally tailored to specific goals and requirements of the organization that employs them, but typically involves developing new algorithms and solutions to support organizational goals. Enterprise architect, the salary ranges between 90 and 120,000 um, pounds. Being an enterprise architect has nothing to do with buildings actually, um, but tends to have more to do with upgrading and maintaining um, a company's IT software, hardware, and services. HR director. So the salary range here tends to be between 100 and 280,000 pounds. And I think that range has a lot to do, as I said, with like experience, what industry you're in. Pay tends to be so different, shockingly different, depending on so many little factors like location and industry and stuff like that. But the most senior HR professional within the department tends to be the HR director and is ultimately responsible for all decisions, um, decision making relating to the organization's human resource um, or human relations, rather policies, practices and strategies. Next up, we have brokers. Brokers tend to deal in commodities and shares and stocks um, and kind of other financial products like that. They tend to buy and sell these financial products on behalf of their clients, which tend to be either individuals or companies. So on average, um, a broker earns £103,000. Medical practitioners. It looks like on average their salary is £75,000. But from what I understand of the description, medical practitioners, it includes such a massive variety of different roles that that number probably <laughs> means nothing, depending on a very much more specific kind of role. So I just went offline real quick from recording to have a little deep dive into the highest paid roles within kind of the medical practitioner space. So they are orthodontics, nephrologists, which to be honest, I've never heard of and I don't know what they do, pediatrics and anesthesiologists. Um, they are in great demand in the UK um, and apparently the best paid. On average, they earn about a hundred thousand pounds a year so next up we have aircraft pilots and flight engineers so on average um they earn about ninety six thousand pounds um i don't think i need to describe to anyone what a pilot does uh if i do 
there's a problem um but i thought it would be interesting to look at their qualifications actually um in terms of like how to become one so it looks like you need appropriate gcse grades or a level grades um or an advanced gnvq or a btec award in order to apply for an airline sponsorship um and then there's a bunch of other things but some things to note is you need good normal colored vision that is a requirement um, as well as a medical examination and training can last up to 15 months um, and consists of courses of study and flying instructions if you would like to become an air pilot or flight engineer air pilot what pilot an interesting one is air traffic controllers. Apparently, on average, they can earn up to £90,000. Um, I don't really know what air traffic controllers do, so I will describe it to us together. Um, so it looks like air traffic controllers prepare flight plans and authorise flight departures and arrivals, as well as maintaining radio radar um, and or visual contact with the aircraft to ensure safe movement of air traffic so interesting that that's so highly paid as well um i didn't know that next up we have advertising and public relations directors so they can earn up to on average eighty-eight thousand pounds which is a good amount of money in terms of a brief description of what they do um, advertising and public relations directors plan, organize and direct the advertising and public relations of public information activities or activities of an organization. That is not the most detailed <laughs> description ever. Entry in terms of qualifications, entry is generally via career progression from related occupations. So this might be a really good one to kind of um, swerve into if that's not what you're into already so advertising accounts managers um, or public relations officers um, can apparently progress into this role although there are no preset entry standards in most in practice most advertising and public relations um, directors tend to hold a degree the next high paying role we have is information technology and telecommunications directors. So they can earn on average up to £82,000. Now, this is definitely one of those ones where I would say it's very much probably dependent on the industry you work in, in that you can have an IT director that doesn't actually work for an IT company, if that makes sense. Um, for me, um, in my experience working at IT companies, I would say, and bigger IT companies, I've worked for one of the biggest in um, the world, I would say. The ones I've worked with have earned well over £82,000. Um, but again, US companies, IT companies, very high paying um it's very much dependent on what company and what industry so let's look at what the job entails in general some of the common tasks for an it or telecoms director are developing um consultation with other senior management in the it strategy of the organization directing the implementation within the organization of it strategy infrastructure procurement and procedures um, as well as developing the periodic business plan and operational budget for IT to deliver agreed services. Um, I think that's a good description. In terms of qualifications, there aren't any particularly preset entry requirements, um, although candidates usually possess a degree or equivalent qualification together with substantial and relevant work experience. From what I've seen so far, I would say a lot of the people I've worked with who are IT directors might not even necessarily have a degree in that particular field, but more their experience tends to be very valuable. So experience is like a really big thing, I would say, in the IT world in general. Financial managers and directors. So on average, they earn up to £79,000 a year. 
a brief, brief description of what they do. Financial managers and directors tend to plan, organize and direct financial information and advise the company on financial policy. I feel like it's one of those descriptions where it sounds really simple, but I guess it's just the, the role is self-explanatory. Some of the common tasks include participating in the formulation and, strat and strategy of long-term business plans, planning external and internal audit programs, arranging for the collection and al analysis of accounting, as well as determining staff levels um, appropriate for accounting activities. Qualifications. There are no preset entry qualifications, although entry is most common with a relevant degree or relevant qualification. Um, professional qualifications are available and are required for certain posts, which is expected in the finance world. Law. So according to this article, lawyers can earn on average about £75,000 a year. Um, some things you would need to typically qualify tend to be obviously a law degree for, and then three to five years of work experience in a similar kind of law related role. Some common skills that help professionals in this role tends to be legal expertise, negotiation, commercial awareness and oral and written communication. One thing I will say, and please take this with a massive pinch of salt, in fact, a bucket of salt, because I've never worked in law, but just watch the news, is that I know that very recently, barristers in the UK actually went on strike due to pay, but I think that might be relative to their pay, relative to the amount of hours they're expected to do. Or it might just be that people who are barristers or lawyers who work for the government aren't as well paid. I'm not sure, but that's definitely something to look into before kind of leaping into it. But I would expect per usual um, people who work in the private sector earn pretty well if they're lawyers, at least in my experience, again, very humbly. Um, Almost every company I've worked for has had um, in-house legal counsel and the lawyers earn big money, big money, because if there's trouble, they're the one ev ones everyone runs to um, so we don't get sued or arrested. So, yeah, that's a little thing to note there. That's it for today's video. I hope you found the video helpful either for entertainment or just inspiration in general. And a special thank you again to Ana Luisa Jewelry for the beautiful jewelry and for sponsoring this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.